with me, your host, Khadija. Now, I hope this goes through this time because this computer is really going to have crazy. I don't know what I need to do, so this is going to be my third time trying to redo this video. So, negative energy must not want me to uh, bless us with this information, but I'm going to try it again. Uh, please excuse my, you know, my grandbaby. She just had to come and spend the night, and she refused to sleep in her bed. She wanted to sleep in there, and uh, she's just out there bad. And so hopefully she won't get up. And I know we should be pretty safe. Unfortunately. If it's any weirdos looking that turns them on, I'm, I'm in trouble. But anyway, let's start right here, you guys. This is an article, and I and I like to read articles from Dr. Uh, T because you know she has a website called Shrink for Men, the number four men, and a lot of people think that this website does not affect uh, women or does not have women who support the channel. The reason why it's geared towards men or shrink for men because most men don't talk about being abused by women. Okay? And what usually happens is they just say, oh, she's crazy. Or it's her time of the month. And it becomes an excuse to uh, excuse pretty much rotten behavior. Okay? So, um, there are siblings, there are partners, there are Women who love women, uh, uh, sisters of, of individuals who are in relationship with these type of women, and so what you need to understand is when you're dealing with somebody that's really high conflict, a lot of times you want to know will they ever change. Um, and this is Dr. T's take on it. And the name of this article is "Do Narcissists Ever Hit Rock Bottom?" She says, do narcissists have a line they won't cross? Is there a low too low for them to go? Do they eventually see the error of their ways? Do they ever hit rock bottom? I've been asked these questions more times than I can recall. And in most cases, what clients have really asked me is, can my narcissist wife, girlfriend, husband, boyfriend, child, parent, sibling uh, change? Will they ever get better? Will we ever go back to those how kind of love bombing days? Hitting rock bottom is an addiction treatment term. It's the lowest self destructive point to which an addict must sleep before he or she admits that they have a problem and seeks help. Do narcissists ever hit rock bottom? Do they change? In my experience, the answer is no. Narcissists may eventually hit a wall or, of accountability, but that's different than hitting a bottom. So just how long can a narcissist go? How low can a narcissist go, I should say? Science hasn't invented a way to measure the subterranean terrain depth yet. Narcissists will go as low as they're allowed to go, and then a lot lower. In fact, 
The more they get away with their stunts, exploitations, and other shadiness, bolder they become and the more reckless they become. Some narcissists only misbehave and abuse others in private. Some narcissists predate shamelessly in full public view. You might find that hard to believe, but there are narcissists actually who are proud of their narcissism. Many narcissists confuse their antisocial behaviors with attitudes for power. Power can be wielded by instilling either fear or respect. If a narcissist can't earn the respect of others, then fear will do just fine. Deep down, most narcissists hunger for respect and admiration. Mm-hmm. However, they lack the basic qualities most non-disordered people admire, such as integrity, decency, genuine talent, a good work ethic, maturity, and wisdom. And let me be clear, wisdom is not the same as intelligence. Therefore, narcissists rely on superficial charm, con artistry, professional victimhood, intimidation, or a combination of all the above to acquire a power of control and admiration. Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. To know is not to be wise. Many men know a great deal and are all greater fools because of it. There is no fool so great as a fool as a knowing fool. But to know how to use knowledge is to have wisdom. That was by Charles Haddon. Did y'all catch that? Let me let me run that by you one more time. Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. To know is not to be wise. Many men know a great deal and are all the greater fools for it. There is no fool so great a fool as knowing a fool. As a knowing fool, I'm sorry. But to know how to use knowledge is to have wisdom. Narcissists bulldoze boundaries, social norms, and decent, you know, basic decency. They lie, bully, cheat, steal, set their victims up to be damaged, make empty promises, assault, tantrum, guilt, trip, smear, gaslight, seduce, and are used sex in order to get whatever they want at any given moment. Narcissists also recruit enablers, negative advocates, flying monkeys, and sometimes straight up thugs to achieve their aims. But they're hurting you. But they're not being fair. Narcissists don't give a damn. They don't care. They just don't. Expecting your narcissist spouse or ex to show you mercy is like expecting a snake not to slip. Or even if they do feel a twinge of shame about their behavior, that shame will very quickly be directed into full rageful attack at the person uh, whom they hurt. If someone lacks empathy, integrity, and a conscience, there's no load that's too low for them to go. Remember that. Remember that. Narcissists put themselves first above all else. And remember, that includes even their children. Typically, a, nar- a narcissist doesn't stop narcissisting because they hit rock bottom. Because there is no bottom. <laughs> There's almost always another line that can be crossed of new degradation or humiliation of a loved one. That, and another lie to blast out of the side of their lying hole. Another victim and neighbor too calm or seduced. The narcissist will go lower and lower until one of the four things occur. One, the narcissist grows bored of you, discards you, and moves on to newer, juicier, shiny narcissist supply. Two, you finally hit your bottom and break up, divorce, quit, no vote, no contact, or fake your own death. Kind of sort of kidding about faking your own death. But, three, the narcissist is stopped by someone or something with authority to make them stop. For example, a judge, police, prison, or public exposure to their true selves. Number four, the narcissist dies of natural causes, of course. I mean, how many times have you heard a person say they can't get rid of somebody? Can't get rid of them. That's a problem. 
you know, or you try to break up with them, and they, you can't. Um, think about this craziness that the way people relate to each other every day, and they think it's normal. The narcissist may still harass, or try to control, and or triangulate you in cases one and two. This means you'll need to create and reinforce a strong boundary to deliver consequences uh, to them for violating. If you don't share minor children, there's no reason not to go full no contact. But if you share minor children, then you got to educate yourself on parallel parenting and how to practice low contact with these people. In case three, any of these occurrences may stop the narcissist for a time if you're lucky, permanently. Even so, once the narcissist is released or no longer accountable to the court and law enforcement, They'll be back to their old tricks again. In case four, I have a highly developed sense of gallows humor and hope you can appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that's the narcissist dies. Highly unlikely, it's highly unlikely any of these events that will cause most people to reevaluate their life choices will cause the narcissist to have an epiphany and change their ways. Narcissists rarely graciously accept being told no. They're not phased by the family court judges who wag their fingers and say, No, 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 you stop that, Mr. Crazy, crazy Pants. Oftentimes, restraining orders aren't a deterrent. The narcissist usually keeps pushing and becomes sneakier in the uh, predations, but they don't stop. Even when they initially experience some consequences, they're terminated. No terminator is a narcissist. Rock bottom for a narcissist is when they finally hit a wall of accountability that they can't bully, tantrum, cry, lie, or buy their way out of. Rock bottom is when the mass of the narcissist's false self is ripped away and their true defenses impotent, self-loathing inner child is revealed. Narcissists are truly pitiful in these moments to the point of despair, depression, and possibly genuine social idolation. Not the mentioning, the manipulative, suicidal threats that they blackmail their partners and families with. Mm. You may even start feeling sorry for them and believe that they might actually be able to learn and mature into a heavier, a healthier individual. Not gonna happen. A Facebook follower on Shrink for Men summed it up well. He said, I've seen that depression when they, when they collapse and hit rock bottom. It's the only time you'll see their true self, the pitiful child inside. It's tempting to assume the nightmare is finally over and try to rescue them. Don't. As soon as they catch their breath, the mask goes back on and they will work even harder to destroy you because now you know their secret. At this time, the narcissist feels sorrier than usual for themselves. They feel powerless, thwarted, vulnerable, and sometimes even admit how horribly they've treated you. This typically the biggest shocker for the spouses or family members of the narcissist when they are so low that they acknowledge how shitty that they've been to you. And for a moment, you feel a flicker of hope. Things may, they may just get better. Womp, 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 womp. Sooner than you can flick on the gaslight, the narcissist's primitive defense mechanisms are fully re-engaged. Then, as previously noted, the narcissist treats you worse than they did before because now you see their true self, that underdeveloped, sad, bitter, flaccid, self-pitying child. And for that, you must be destroyed. I observed this in my relationship with my narcissistic ex. We were at the dog park one day after I discovered that he'd been cheating on me with the mullet hair, buck tooth, bisexual, former child actress. I'm not making this up, I swear. The ex was uncharacteristically contrite and riddled with shame for approximately four or five days. During this fleeting portal to an alternate dimension, unable to make contact with me, he asked, how can you still want to be with me? Aren't you disgusted by me? I disgust myself. Short answer, codependency, betrayal, codependency plus betrayal plus CPTSD. Mm. 
Okay. One of the most effed up things. Um, <clears throat> hey, let the dog out. One of the most effed up things about the whole fucked up relationship with a narcissist is comforting your abuser when they hit what you believe is their rock bottom. So many of my clients do this. Hell, I did it. We think we're being compassionate and want to believe that they'll actually change. In reality, it's just another violation of an especially sadistic and an especially sadistic one at that. Hard won lesson learn about crocodile tears, self respect, and self care. Predictably, the ex shame and remorse was short lived. The abuse rushed up to extreme new levels until he finally sucker punched me. Why? For telling my family and friends what was going on? I mean, exposure? So I could get some much needed support? Getting sucker punched by someone that I love and trusted was my rock bottom. Three days later, I packed up and I moved a thousand miles away while he was out of town on a business trip. If you're still in one of these toxic relationships, what's your rock bottom? And if you're waiting for the narcissist to hit her or his rock bottom and miraculously change, please stop deluding yourself. Instead, determine what is absolute what is the absolute worst thing that this narcissist could do to you in order for you to end the relationship. Then think of all the horrible things he or she had already done to your ass. And then ask yourself, why are you waiting around for that final degradation? Why? Again, y'all, this article comes from Dr. T, um, Dr. Tara Palmatier, who I think is a great life coach and also a good therapist. Go to her website, Shrink for Men, and see if you can use some of the bones and tidbits that she throw at you. Okay? Um, I believe that we are socially engineered now to be one of the most narcissistic countries on the face of the earth. Um, I believe we lead, but I believe the other uh, countries are falling right behind. And so it is these character defects that are running the world in a lot of ways. People who are unempathetic, who are unintegrity, um, if that's the word, <laughs> uncharacteristic. I mean, people like Donald Trump, no character, no morality, no nothing, just empty, empty vessels. And this is what um, we've become. I, you know, I don't even want to talk about him so much. It's just, I can't believe how many people eat what he sells. That's what is really scary, in my opinion. So with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, you guys.